sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I say? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Good morning to you all, and we gather today to offer this funeral mass for the repose of the soul of Kathleen Kearney. We celebrate Kathleen's life today, however, the longevity of life pain of saying farewell to a mother, a grandmother, an aunt, and a friend to countless numbers of people. Catherine brought great happiness and joy to many lives throughout her long life. We give thanks to God today for the gift of our life. We welcome Catherine's family today. We welcome her sons, Joe, Pat, and Michael, daughters, Breda, Rosaline, Bernadette, and Kathleen, to her 12 grandchildren, 25 great-grandchildren, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, nephew, nieces, extended family, and friends. Today we pray with you, and we pray for you, as we accompany Kathleen on her final journey. There is a table beside Kathleen's coffin, and on it is placed various items symbolizing interests in Kathleen's life. There is a handkerchief, which was always a must to Kathleen wherever she went. It was a great source of comfort to her. There is CDs of country music representing Kathleen's great love and enjoyment of country music. There is rosary beads which are a symbol of Kathleen's deep, devoted faith, faith in Jesus Christ. And there is a family photograph representing Kathleen's love for her entire family, who brought her so much joy in her life. In life, Kathleen cherished the gospel of Christ, May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life.
Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Kathleen received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our failings and ask our merciful Father for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Kathleen, who has fallen asleep in Christ, to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the readings, and I invite Rosaline and Bernadette to please come forward. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. The word of the Lord. Be not afraid. I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, Though you do not know the way, you shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. Blessed are your poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you who weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked men in 
Reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. The length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's grey hair on tarnished life. This is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that even men are wrapped his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascin fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts the simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him, yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones, the word of the Lord. Anyone who believes in me shall never die. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I invite you to stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist said to his disciples, He who comes from above is above all others. He who is born of the earth is earthly himself and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven bears witness to the things he has seen and heard, even if his testimony is not accepted. To all who do accept his testimony are attesting the truthfulness of God, since he whom God has sent speaks God's own word. God gives him the spirit without reserve. The father loves the son and has entrusted everything to him. Anyone who believes in the son has eternal life, but anyone who refuses to believe in the son will never see life. The anger of God stays on him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We heard the line in John's Gospel, anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. And it is those few brief words from the Gospel passage that capture our celebration of this funeral mass this morning. For anyone who believes in the Son of God has eternal life. It is that eternal life that we entrust Kathleen Kearney this morning. We entrust her into the tender embrace of God our Father. Less than two weeks ago, Christians throughout the world celebrated the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This year, however, we celebrated in the most extraordinary circumstances as our country has come into terms with challenging situation. But perhaps the message of Easter, the message of the Paschal candle that burns at the foot of Kathleen's coffin, reminds us of Jesus' victory over sin and death. 
Our time here on Earth is very much like a pilgrimage. It is a journey that begins, and it is a journey that must also end. We are all on this pilgrim journey, and our destination at the end of our lives is, as the Gospel passage reminds us, is eternal life. The Paschal Candle, our faith, reminds us of that every moment, every hour of our, day, of our lives. Jesus Christ offered himself for us so that we may have life and have it to the full. Today we commend to Almighty God the soul of Kathleen Kearney, a life that began on the 5th of July, 1920, with seven in her family, Kathleen was the second eldest and is the last remaining member of her family as she begins this, her final journey home to her eternal reward. Growing up in her youth in Rathana and Pepperstown outside RD, at a young age, Kathleen began working at 14 years of age. Before the first, before the Second World War began, Kathleen has seen some changes in her lifetime. And it was at a dance in Talonstown Hall, perhaps it was the beginning of Kathleen's love of country music, her love of dancing, that she met Paddy Kearney. And it was the beginning of her friendship that was culminated in 1944, when Kathleen and Paddy were married together. They were blessed with eight children who Kathleen loved each and every day of her life. She cherished you, she loved you. It is that unconditional love of self-sacrifice in difficult times that marks our Christian life. Because God was once asked, what is the greatest commandment? To love others as ourselves. And in early years, life was difficult as Kathleen and Paddy began their lives in Rathbody in Reistown, rearing their children in difficult circumstances, challenging times. But Kathleen always ensured that her children had a happy childhood where they can remember and cherish the memory memories, the memory laughs that they shared together. In 1979, Kathleen and Paddy were offered land and new opportunity here in Trim in exchange for their family holding. And they moved to Trim. It was a difficult transition for Kathleen, a difficult time. All her family and her friends were in Reistown and the surrounding areas. It was difficult saying goodbye to the Louth Sile and moving to County Meath. But it was nonetheless, it took Kathleen a number of years to settle into life and to trim, but she did so with that gentle smile that she always shone brightly. She made many new friends here in trim, became a member of Trim Active Retirement. Kathleen looked forward to the social outings and the many trips away. She enjoyed socializing in her life. She enjoyed, as I mentioned, the country music, the dancing and the waltz. Kathleen looked forward to each year to her annual trip away to a music concert with her daughters. That religious night away was a must each year to spend that precious time together. Kathleen was a deeply religious woman, as you know, she had deep faith and came religiously here to the Vigil Mass for many, many years. And in latter years, she would tune in to the Mass on the local radio. In recent years, experiencing declining health, Kathleen received the help of carers who called to her home to help her with a helping hand. But Kathleen always kept them on her toes many times saying less talk and more work, but it was all done with a smile, with happiness and joy. Kathleen lived her life 
very much young at heart. Her family have remarked that Kathleen was an inspiration to them, but also to her 12 grandchildren and 25 great-grandchildren. But to Joe, to Pat and Michael, to Breda, Kathleen, Bernadette and Rosaline, Kathleen cherished you with that unconditional love that St. Paul reminds us never ends. And today as we take leave of Kathleen, we are reminded that it is our faith that will lighten up our days in the time ahead, that it will offer us the consolation. But remember all the gifts that you shared together. Remember those happy memories, those music concerts, those laughs, and above all, may Kathleen's warm smile warm your hearts in the days ahead. In recent years, as Kathleen was approaching the great age of 100, her family would often remark to her about reaching this great milestone, and she would quite often rebuke them by saying, stop lying. But perhaps that shows to us of her youthfulness of heart. She was young throughout her life. She gave that gift of life, that gift of love to her family and friends. Today, she returns home to County Louth, to Reistown. Perhaps her heart always remained in Reistown with her family and friends. Today, she begins that journey to be reunited with her husband, Paddy, and son, James, who have gone before her. We commend Kathleen to God as we accompany her on this journey. May God love you, Kathleen, and safe journey home. Let us stand for the prayers of the faithful and we invite Breda, Kathleen and Seamus to please come forward. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ as Son from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. We, we pray for our dear beloved mother who has died. May God now welcome her into his heavenly home of eternal happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our mums, sons and daughters, extended family and friends. May God fill their hearts with his comfort and consolation. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are dedicated to caring for the sick and old. And in particular, we pray for the doctors, nurses, and the amazing carers who tended to ma'am during her old age. May God reward their goodness and kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, virtually hear us. As we pray that ma'am will find eternal peace, we pray for the whole world during this dreadful virus and hope a cure will be found soon. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for all who have died. We pray for Kathleen, her late son James, her husband Paddy, and all her relatives and friends who have gone before her. May God unite them all in the happiness and peace of his heavenly home. Amen. Lord, hear us. In the moment of silence, let us pause as we offer our own personal prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated now as we have the offer to possession with the gifts of bread and wine brought forward by Michael and Pat. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come. His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our God and the God of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Kathleen, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In hope, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we say the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance which are elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Kathleen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of our own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are. We shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from our evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God to thee. 
What joy shall fill my heart? There shall I bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Kathleen may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Kathleen, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Kathleen again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Now sprinkle Kathleen's water or coffin with holy water as a symbol of the sacrament of baptism and the gift of eternal life. And we honor her coffin with incense. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who call you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto Kathleen, our Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. 
receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Kathleen in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Kathleen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn to us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Father Paul and myself, we wish to offer our deepest sympathies to Kathleen's family, to Joe, to Pat, to Michael, to Breda, Kathleen, Bernadette and Rosaline, and to Kathleen's extended family, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, nephew, nieces, and her many friends. In recent times, I used to joke with Kathleen when I'd visit her, was that was she preparing for her great birthday as she was approaching 100 years of age? And was she planning a party? And she would simply respond, no, there's no going, to, going to be no party. But perhaps this year on the 5th of July, there will be a party. There will be a party with all her friends and family who have gone before her. And perhaps maybe today that is our wish for Kathleen. That is our birthday present to her as she enters into eternal life. In peace, let us take our sister Kathleen to our place of rest. Mind, 
shut just as the sun had gone down. Turning his back on his kid, oh, likewise his dear little town. Facing the road's awful dire now, with the gypsy he loved so sincere. When he came to the light of the campfire, these are the words he did hear. Rare on the road to Kilsey.